Don't use your voice. Yes, no. Okay. I'm sorry, by the way, we don't have piano today, but um, so it's really like a violin junkies masterclass <laughs> today. <laughs> but but this is nice with Sigan. It's almost half without piano. So great. <laughs> said that you just finished your freshman year? Yes. Right? So you're going to be a sophomore mm -hmm, yes. in the fall. Okay.
Once you get past the basically learning how to hold it, basically learning how to stand, you know, all the things that um, are painful in those beginning years, painful for our parents to <laughs> in the beginning years to listen to. Um, and once you, once we are actually really trying to say something with our playing, once we are really in touch with the emotion of these pieces, the the grandeur, um, at times, there's this sheer emotional range of what we are trying to express with the violin through this tiny little box that really doesn't take much strength to play at all. Okay, with the, you know, to put things into perspective, we talk about, when we're talking about bows, we think, Oh my gosh, the difference between 56 and 58 ounces. This one's so heavy. You know? <laughs> and, you know, 60, forget it. Um, I mean, ounces we're talking about there. We change strings. Oh my God, this, this set of strings, I have to work so much harder. I mean, it's really just in our head. You know? mm -hmm. um, we have to learn how to express and project energy we have to, some of the most intense emotions that human emotions while not squashing the violin and that i think is one of it is i think our our biggest challenge that's why we yes it's an awkward position to to play in but i don't know if you've noticed that music that's very moderate in in temperament do you find it's easier to play, like more relaxed? Mm -hmm. It's just, yeah, it's like kind of like no sweat. I, 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 used to, I used to be very confused by that. I thought, why can't I just be always this relaxed? <laughs> and I mean, but I think this is why. Our body, every single part of our body is responding to the intensity of the music. So I would really recommend um, trying to separate the two. Try to stay as relaxed as possible all the time with your muscles, but in here and in here to feel all of that intensity, and um, but to channel it into the violin, um, not in a forceful way. Um, it's a little bit uh, as an analogy. You might have a, 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 a gallon jug. Okay. Uh, gallon milk carton and have this little hole here and if we pour buckets of water into it some of it is going to go in there but we're wasting most of it right and so because only a little bit is going in there then we have to pour even more water um, really what we want is that funnel and the right speed of pouring the water in and then it's going to fill much faster that's really what, what we're after, okay? Um, so as a general approach, I think, try the, big, try the opening um, and think about instead of, um, instead of pushing deep into the string, how about allow the bow to fall deeply through the string?
like your bows. So the, the limit of the depth that we'll get here is really the space between the hair and the, and the stick. After that, we're pushing with the stick into the G string. So. Do you ask your bow every day? No. Oh, we found another one. <laughs> So the looser the hair, the less we rosin in order to create leverage, um, to create tension, we actually have to squeeze the stick in order to um, stretch the stick out and therefore stretch the hair out so that we have more, um, oh gosh, sorry about this. No. Cheap hotel toothbrushes are really great for this. <laughs> like the, the ones that you never want to use on your TV. <laughs> sure, let me see. Oh, good. Let's try that. Okay. Let it fall through. Pretend your, your bow is 500 pounds. And so all you have to do is drop it through the string. You don't have to push, but it is 500 pounds. to get to 500. It's amazing how much more you were working, right? Yeah. Before. Yeah. Um, yeah, you never, you never want to, if you ever feel like in order to generate more power, I need to squeeze more, then yeah, check your hair, check your rosin, and then it's also just <laughs> convincing yourself that no, I don't need to, to do this. Um, one very specific thing going along with this is you will realize is that wrapping the finger around isn't going to do anything. It's not going to, to really help. Okay? What we want to do is create leverage into the string. We want the, the middle of the, the bow to go straight down into the hair. And wrapping doesn't do anything, right? Mm -hmm. It just, just feels really tense. <laughs> and um, what we want to do is pronate into the stick. That's right. Almost like, um, like I'm going to hold it here and now prone it into, that's right. Just rotate, like you're going to turn a doorknob, okay? And the thumb, uh, were you, you were here when Nate was, was playing. We were talking about the thumb, right? The thumb is going to go up into the stick. So when this goes up, you see this goes down, that's into the string, right? So try that here, try it in the middle of the bow and thumb up and pronate at the same time and don't allow the bow to do this. Stay on the same plane and what will happen is the middle is going to go straight into the string. That's right, right. And without wrapping, um, this is all a sensation of like how, you know, what am I touching this music stand with? And what we don't want to feel anything here with the, the this top joint of the, of the index finger. If you feel anything, that means we're wrapped around. Okay? It looks like, I don't know, looks like it's touching, but really they're hanging. Okay? Yeah, they're just, they're just draped over here. What we do want is this on top of the stick. That's where we really want the contact. And the thumb underneath, and then they rotate. That's right, right. Try the, try just the upper. That's good, good. Okay, try, try the third. Okay, good. Seems like you feel like you have to wrap. 
tap your finger more as you come to a tip, right? We're losing sound, and then we're like, you know, gotta push. Losing sound, we lose, oh, I mean, just about all violinists, we lose sound, not because it's the tip, not because it's lighter or it's further away. I mean, that's part of it, but we just slow our bow down. And that's the fastest way to lose sound, to slow down your bow, to accelerate, until you stop and there's no sound, okay? So how about keep it moving? That's right, that's not losing sound. Okay, try it again. Yeah, now hold it as long as you want to hold it and play the whole phrase. Even, even more. What happens is, in general, it's weird on the violin. We, we think of our, I don't know, our, our elbow as it relates to the strings, right? But actually, each string is on a completely different plane. So, and we generally start, we, we generally think of it like this, right? Flat. Okay. Do you ever think about this? Yeah. Kind of each string, but. I mean, sometimes we're actually, it's like this. We don't generally, we usually pretend we're playing the violin like this, right? Not like this. But that's what it's like. You can almost, you can reproduce it by leaving the bow flat and just rotating the violin, okay? But we're not, of course, we're not going to do this when we play. But that's how far over we have to get to get to the G string. If we're not, right now, our everything here is below that plane. And that means we're just pulling down on the string. And that's when it sounds, um, it feels pressed. Okay, we're constricting the string. So imagine that plane, put your violin up, okay. Imagine there's a plane here, like a board that goes all the way up there. Okay, that's the level you, you want to get your arm up there. I mean, get your bow up there. And not with your elbow, but from inside your shoulder and rotate it up. That's right. Okay, go over there. And it really should, should not be parallel to the ground. It should be pointing down into the ground. That's right. That is the plane, right? And remember, it goes down to the E string. Now, Bring your whole arm over together. Okay, we don't want to flip up any part by itself. That's right, right. I mean, if you think about it, if you're up there, then your upper arm also is definitely not going to go down to the ground, right? At least, probably even pointing up a little bit. That's right. Okay, now um, do, do just a down bow. And you're going to go up into the air. That's right, right? Keep your bow moving now. Right, even more. I want, to, I want to see your follow through. Up. Better. Right, not so much better. <laughs> Your, so you, your, your bow is still pointing down. Yeah, really like an exaggerate. Yeah, you see how much more leverage you got. Now don't press. Okay, when we're on top of this string, it's sort of like we're like this. Then we don't have to press as much. That's what I mean by pretend this is 500 pounds and you're dropping it into the string. Good. Now, the sound is you know, it's resonance. Right? We're making the, we're um, initiating the string to ring in a certain way. The, the violin is magnifying that. And so how we articulate the string, it, that is immediately the audience's perception of our sound. And then we manipulate it. 
from there. But let's say, was, let's pretend you're not going to change your sound. You want one sound, okay? Let's play that B. You're going to, we need to articulate it the way we want and then just keep the bow moving after that. We don't have to keep touching the string at every point of the bow the way we would need to start. So if we do that, then we squash the sound. After you articulate it, this is all going to be lighter, okay? And just keep your bow moving. But it has to be immediately deep. Try it, don't slow down your bow. Good. Okay, so these are these are several elements that you can experiment with. Okay. Um, now that's just these are just general mechanical things. Um, these are not that's you're not gonna play hopefully that first note like that, the first and second notes. Just flat one sound. You're going to develop the sound. Um, we have only a few minutes left. Sigan. Well, for, first of all, I was thinking you started playing. We had Mozart and Paganini and Ravel so far. Three of the greatest writers for violin. This, this opening cadenza is just one of the greatest things that has ever been written for the violin. How to exploit it. Um, and for a non-violinist, that was what really, I, I think it might be the greatest thing, the greatest violin writing by a non-violinist. Um, but Zigan, it's the, the gypsy, the, the, the implications of that, the personality of it, the, the imagination, okay? Um, you're, do, you're being very, very, Beautiful and attentive to, and that's so wonderful because Ravel is one of the most masterful composers technically. Okay, he knew how to how to write what he wants, kind of like like Mozart. Um, however, what you can do is go past that. You're noticing all the rhythms, but what did he mean by it? What did he mean emotionally with it? Also remembering, putting it, put it in the context of Zigan. Okay, so right at the beginning, is it a, it's a 30 second note, right? ba da and da da lum ba da and then da da ba da ya da da lum ba da 16th note. You're basically doing it, but what is the, what is the implication of why 30 second note? What does that do compared to the 16th note? Second note is more like it makes it more intense and exciting um, compared to the sixteenth note. Intense and exciting in and can you describe that intensity and exciting? Go even one step beyond. Maybe um, like more intense, um, and I feel like the sixteenth note is more like not steady, but it's more like set compared to the 30 second note. I like that word, set. Okay, so 30 second note, therefore, not set. Mm -hmm. Unstable, maybe that yeah. would be, okay. Not so grounded. Mm -hmm. um, not so, uh, it's, it's not like, it's not something that's dependable. It's not a mountain, mm -hmm. okay. Um, something that's, it, it may be just something, an explosion. Mm -hmm. More shocking, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay, it sounds like it's just, it sounds intense and strong, mm -hmm. but how about wild? Mm -hmm. Okay, try that. Good. Um, how about? 
lies behind me. So, not going ahead. Okay, make everybody want it and make them wait and then set it. That's right, that's the idea. Okay, but you'll, you'll get when you're practicing, you'll get back to the not squeezing. Right now, you're squeezing more and more, but that's that's the idea. And ta da ba da da ba da I don't remember what note are these, 64th notes maybe you've been notating? I think so. Yeah, those are really fast. How often do we have 64th notes? <laughs> okay, uh, what, again, what imp what's the implication of that? I think it means to be more urgent. Great, be more urgent and stretch these things. That was, that was kind of relaxed. And, uh, you don't have to play stronger, just play faster. <laughs> and, okay, and more shocking. So it feels like that. More explosion. Do you remember all this? Yes. I okay. Do. I mean, that's a lot of information he's giving us. And so fast, so quickly. And the words he used actually. Okay. Moderato has an Hesitate. Hold back your rope. I think hesitando is even a, even, a, even a more descriptive word, like hesitating. And then? Accelerando for one bar, and then vivo, which is really fast, and then rallentando for one bar, and then allegro, and then accelerando, and then vivo, and it's very unstable, right? And then moderato, and then accelerando, and then <laughs> vivo, meno vivo. Um, I think you should really exaggerate these, okay? Let's play it again uh, from the moderato. What, actually, what's the character here? Um, here, like at the beginning, yeah. I think it's kind of like pretty casual, but it's like happy and casual. Good, I like that. Sounds a little bit concerned. <laughs> sounds very diligent. <laughs> like someone's you know, taking steps. Oh yeah, he's going for going for a walk, but you're like putting your feet in the right place. When we're happy and we're speaking out there, we're communicating out there, we have to get it out there, right? If I speak sort of like this, well, then it feels a little bit like the downer. So get your sound out there, send it out. This is better. First, first two notes are still we were really using both that much. Say this is set, would you? No. You know, this a um, little bit impulsive, or free, very free. Okay, be free. Good. 
try one thing as an exercise. Look at them the whole time. And just like you're speaking to them, okay? the same range. It's not, you know, what's not great is, I know, it feels horrible when somebody's out there and say, oh, I can't hear you, I can't hear you, and then little by little, you start playing louder and louder. That does, that never feels good while you're playing. But this, this is a really great, it's a really great exercise. Okay. Um, go on just a little bit and exaggerate. Slow, it says hesitating. Good, that's good. What's the point of this? The harmonic? Yeah. I think. Why a harmonic there? To make it sound more flowy. Flowy, okay, the sound quality. Mm -hmm. Okay. What's the pitch of that harmonic? D. Yeah, can you play it in that register? Oh, yeah. here. Right. Okay, so can you fill that interval in? Do this once on the D string. That's how far you have to go with the... I would say high note. This there you go. I think it should be more than the A. Die young. It's more than it's or. and vivo and then this now you can see it's really just crazy it's so mild it's so unpredictable and this is exactly what is amazing about Ravel's writing um, but we have to not just do it not just kind of go faster and play faster and then slow down a little bit more and play the harmonic and really have to think about the the implications of of it, you know, what is the difference in the feeling? Okay, throughout is the this is a theme in variations. Every every variation just have a different feeling. Um, the difference between this, how dreamy it is, to and then. So take, try to take a fresh look at it. Okay, great. Thank you, Hanami. Thank you so much. Great.